So I come to the last part of the discussion. So this will be about uh, status epilepticus and management of status epilepticus. So at the end of this, we will discuss the entire topic in short, including dogs. So let Aaron continue. So status epilepticus. Status epilepticus refers to continuous seizures or repeat, repetitive discrete seizures with impaired consciousness in the interrectal period. It can be uh, generalized convulsive status epilepticus that is uh, persistent generalized electrographic uh, seizures, coma or tonic tonic minimus, and non convulsive status epilepticus. It can be a, a absent seizure or focal seizure with confusion or partially impaired uh, consciousness and minimal motor activities. Uh, for generalized uh, convulsive status epilepticus, the duration of epilepsy, duration of seizures is typic typically last beyond five minutes. So, causes of uh, generalized convulsive uh, status epilepticus, anti-convulsion withdrawal or non compliances or certain drug toxicity like chemotherapy, chemotherapy agents like cisplatin, sulfon, iphosphamide, immunosuppressants like cyclosporine, tacrolimus, Antibiotics like beta lactam, especially safety fine and fluoroquinolones, the metabolic disturbances, uh, CNS infections, CNS tumors, refractory epilepsy, head trauma, hypoglycemia, eclampsia, alcohol withdrawal, or other autoimmune causes. So, coming to approach to uh, centralized tonic clonic status epilepticus in adults, uh, first line is. IV benzodiazepines, we can try uh, midazolam or lorazepam or clonazepam. Uh, at a dose of uh, midazolam, at a dose of uh, lorazepam, at a dose of 0.1 mg per kg, midazolam at a dose of 0.2 mg per kg, and clonazepam at a dose of 0 0.015 mg per kg can be used. Uh, if required, uh, the IV benzodiazepines can be repeated after 5 minutes. And if still the seizure is uh, uh, not settling, then we can go for any of the long acting uh, IV anti seizure medications. Uh, commonly used drugs are either uh, sodium valproate, levetiracetam, or phenytoin. Uh, sodium valproate at a dose of 20 to 30 mg per kg IV bolus, or levetiracetam at a dose of 20 to 30 mg per kg IV bolus, or phenytoin at a dose of 20 mg per kg. So, despite one uh, IV benzodiazepine and one anti seizure, long acting anti seizure medication, with the status epilepsy still continuing, we can go for uh, uh, anesthetic medications, uh, uh, sedatives as uh, infusions. For a generalized convulsive status epilepsy, we can try IV metasolum as infusion. 0.2 mg per kg followed by 0.2 to 0.6 mg per kg per hour and uh, we can also try IV propranolol at 2 mg per kg uh, followed by 2 to 10 mg per kg per hour. The next uh, drug in line will be pentobarbitone at uh, 5 mg per kg uh, barbital, uh, 5, 5 mg per kg. So maximum 1 to 5 mg per kg per hour. If still uh, the status epilepticus is uh, uh, not settling, we can try other uh, agents like uh, lidocaine, varapamil, magnesium, ketogenic diet and immunomodulations or other anesthetic agents like isofluorine, desfluorine, ketamine can be tried. And even other approaches like surgery, and other nerve stimulations, hypothermia can also be tried. So, after 30 to 40 minutes of uh, uninterrupted seizures and after neuromuscular blockade, uh, the signs may become uh, increasingly subtle during which uh, EEG may be the only method of establishing the diagnosis. That is, uh, initially the patient may have uh, uh, tonic clonic movements. But over a period of time, the patient may uh, not uh, manifest uh, much uh, uh, motor manifestations. And most of the time, patients with uh, generalized clonic, clonic uh, status epilepticus will require intubation and uh, neuromuscular pocket. So in such scenarios, 
we may we may not know the if the seizure is ongoing or not so only eeg monitoring can help us establish the diagnosis at that time so in a community setting if you see a seizure lasting for more than 5 minutes that is generalized uh, seizures uh, you can give a buccal metazolam or rectal uh, diazepam immediately uh, in inpatient setting where iv line access is available first line will be benzodiazepines as we discussed if the seizure does not stop uh, within 5 to 10 minutes of the first dose a second dose benzodiazepine can be given certain terminologies uh, we should be clear about uh, prolonged seizure that is seizures lasting more than 2 minutes that is uh, more than the typical generalized uh, seizures but it is uh, does not uh, last more than 5 minutes that is it does not fall into um, uh, status epileptic category also. such uh, seizures are called prolonged seizures and then we have a repeat a repetitive seizures or cluster of seizures which are typically three or more self terminating seizures in a period of 24 hours with the gaining of consciousness in between so we have a seizure between 3 to 5 minutes uh, there is no clear cut evidence for management of uh, such seizures uh, but we should intervene at this uh, time window period because uh, this uh, will eventually progress to status epilepticus so we have to intervene at this time at this time benzodiazepines can uh, be tried and are currently recommended by many experts as a first line treatment so coming to ketogenic diet uh, as i mentioned uh, patients with uh, epilepsy and underlying sodium channelopathy Uh, they will have uh, this blood uh, one deficiency and uh, certain epilepsy associated with pyruvate dehydrogenase uh, deficiency we can try ketogenic diet uh, infantile spasm syndromes uh, epilepsy with myoclonic atonic seizures that is dusay syndrome uh, dravet syndrome lenox lenox gastaut syndrome and uh, drug resistant in drug resistant epilepsy if other treatment options have been unsuccessful or if not appropriate then we can try ketogenic diet so most often uh, uh, epilepsy patients will have other uh, comorbidities most common are attention deficit hyperactivity autism spectrum disorder generalized anxiety disorder uh, panic attacks patients will have associated depression they may have uh, psychosis uh, subtle cognitive dysfunction or frank uh, intellectual disability they are at higher risk of suicide than general population patients will present with post ictal psychosis and there is always this uh, sudden uh, unexpected death in patients with epilepsy uh, brief uh, words about the uh, sudden that is sudden unexpected death in epilepsy it's a clinical syndrome we don't know the cause it usually occurs in young people with convulsive seizures it tends to occur more at uh, night they say it may result from some brain stem mediated effects of seizures on some pulmonary cardiac and other arousal functions and centers Uh, recent studies also suggest that in some cases a genetic mutation may be the cause for both epilepsy and some associated cardiac conduction defect that might have resulted in sudden death so modified risk factors for uh, sudep include non adherence to medications associated alcohol or drug misuse patients having focal to bilateral tonic clonic seizures or generalized tonic clonic seizures patients who are uh, having uncontrolled seizures despite therapy patients who are living alone even sleeping alone without supervision they are at high risk for developing sudep uh, most of the seizure patients will have social issues we have to decide whether the patient can be allowed to drive or not so guidelines suggest to follow local regulations which are very applicable these patients should be warned against uh, working at heights and uh, 
working with machinery uh, they can develop uh, seizures during bathing and swimming they should be educated about that so catamenial epilepsy uh, this is uh, as uh, sir mentioned there is increased uh, increase in frequent uh, seizure frequency around the time of menses it is uh, believed to be mediated by the effects of estrogen and progesterone on neuronal excitability or changes in the anti seizure drug levels due to some altered uh, protein binding or metabolism during the period of menses um, some women with epilepsy may benefit from increase in anti seizure drug doses during the menses uh, natural progestins and intramuscular metroxy progesterone may be of some benefit uh, in this subset of women so coming to pregnancy and seizures uh seizure uh, frequency uh, remains unchanged in approximately 50% of women during pregnancy and in another 30% there is chance that seizure frequency may increase and in another 20% the chance is that uh, seizure frequency may decrease this is attributed to some endocrine effects on the cns and there is a variation in the anti seizure drug pharmacokinetics like acceleration of the hepatic duct metabolism or effects of plasma pro uh, protein binding or changes in the medicine complaints during pregnancy uh, fetal abnormalities are another uh, uh, topic to be discussed in patients uh, who are having epilepsy and are pregnant the incident, overall incidence is higher uh, compared to a non uh, epileptic patient 5 to 6% is the incidence due to most commonly it is attributed to teratogenic effects of anti seizure drugs so all patients uh, with epilepsy should be advised to take folate at a range of 1 to 4 mg per day because of the anti folate effects of anti convulsants and uh, certain enzyme inducing uh, drugs like phenytoin carbamazepine topiramate phenobarbital primidin can cause a transient and reversible deficiency of vitamin k dependent clotting factors so such uh, patients and mothers should be advised to take oral vitamin k that is 20 mg per day of phylloquinone the last two weeks of pregnancy and the all infants should receive intramuscular injection of vitamin k 1 mg at birth mm. so do as you know many are enzyme inducing drugs alternative contraception should be advised Uh, if they are planning for preg uh, to avoid pregnancy uh, coming to non convulsive status epilepticus status epilepticus without prominent motor symptoms uh, lasting for more than 10 minutes without regaining baseline consciousness is non convulsive status epilepticus uh ictal activity constituting for more than 20% of an hour of a recording that is more than 12 minutes uh, is also classified as uh, non convulsive status epilepticus uh, causes are more or less the same as that of uh, generalized convulsive status epilepticus this uh, non convulsive uh, status epilepticus can occur in the aftermath that is after uh, uh, generalized convulsive status epilepticus uh, they can proceed to non convulsive status epilepticus clinical features there may be subtle signs we, we have to be aware of Uh, to uh, uh, pick up patients with the non convulsive status epilepticus uh, the impairment in consciousness may range from mild confusion to even you know, frank coma uh, other features can be broadly classified as uh, positive and negative symptoms positive symptoms include agitations or aggressions automatism blinking crying delirium delusions echolalia facial twitching laughter nausea vomiting nystagmus or eye deviation perseveration psychosis or tremors negative symptoms uh, can be anorexia aphasia or mutism amnesia catatonia coma lethargy or even staring can be the only manifestation so based on uh, the uh, presence of coma or not it can be classified as uh, patients with the coma or without coma again we have uh, without coma we have a generalized and uh, focal onset uh, there is something called boundary conditions where uh, 
in addition to the above subtypes, uh, non-conscious status epileptics uh, takes uh, distinct forms in early childhood. Where there is evidence of ongoing electrographic epileptic activity, but they lack uh, clinical symptomology. Uh, example: neonatal and infantile epileptic encephalopathies, electrical status epilepticus of sleep, coma or acute confusional states with epileptic form EEG patterns. So to proceed with uh, patients in uh, status epilepticus, uh, and especially non-conversive status epilepticus. Uh, the idea is that we sh there should be a suspicion that patient may have a, a non-conscious status epilepticus if the patient is showing any fluctuation or unexplained alteration in their behavior or their mental status. So EEG should be ordered immediately. So all basic uh, laboratory investigations, uh, neuroimaging, even lumbar puncture can be performed if in doubt. So then uh, continuous EEG is, is a more sensitive test than a routine EEG for detection of uh, non-convulsive seizures. There are some uh, seizure uh, prediction score based on the EEG activity that if the patient uh, may develop uh, seizures or not. So in definite uh, non-convulsive status epilepticus, without known epileptic encephalopathy, there will be uh, focular generalized uh, spike and uh, sharp waves or simply sharp and slow complexes at a frequency ranging uh, more than 2.5 hertz. Sometimes these patients can show electrographic and uh, clinical improvement after a trial of uh, uh, IV anti-system medication. Patients with chronic epilepsy and epileptic encephalopathy it can be frequent or continuous generalized spike wave discharges. It shows uh, significant changes in the intensity or frequency and compared to the baseline EEG. So treatment uh, for non-convulsive status epilepticus is more or less the same as the, the convulsive uh, status epilepticus. So IV benzodiazepine in combination with the uh, non-coma inducing IV anti-system medication is the choice. Again, among the IV medications, we have lorazepam, midazolam, uh, and uh, anti seizure medications, we have uh, Levitracetam, sodium alphabet, phenytoin. In addition, uh, phospho, phosphenytoin and lacosamic can be used. So as an add-on uh, non-anesthetic options, we have uh, topiramate, gabapentin, pre-gabalin, flobosum, flobosum, parampanel, oxcarmozepine, carmozepine, and viagabitrin. As a continuous infusion, as you all know, metasolum, propofol, pentobarbital can be used um, as similar to uh, state convulsive status epilepticus. We can also use ketamine to so move on to refractive status epilepticus. That is, uh, if the status epilepticus does not cease with administration of two anti seizure medications administered in appropriate and adequate doses, usually an intravenous benzodiazepine followed by uh, anti seizure medications. So then we call it as refractive status epilepticus. Then we have super refractory status epilepticus. That is, if the status epilepticus, which lasts for, uh, which persists or recurs after 24 hours or more of treatment. Then we have NORSE, that is new onset refractory status epilepticus. Uh, that is, without a clear, acute or active structural toxic or metabolic cause, if the patient is developing a refractory status epilepticus, then it is a new onset refractory status epilepticus. There should be uh, without earlier epilepsy or other neurological disorder known to precipitate seizures. If uh, despite the uh, evaluation, if there is uh, no such uh, etiology identified in the first 72 hours of presentation, uh, they should be classified under NORSE. Some experts even include viral encephalitis or autoimmune encephalopathy uh, under uh, NORSE. A yeah, similar uh, uh, picture in children is termed as FIRES, that is uh, febrile infection related epilepsy syndrome. So, approach to NOSI. All these uh, new onset refractive status epilepticus, patient will be very sick. Uh, I require ICU care. Uh, neurologic consultation should be obtained as soon as possible. 
that they should be advised continuous eeg monitoring uh, vitals should be monitored uh, they should be kept under infusion of midazolam uh, phenobarbital or ketamine and with the uh, concomitant anti seizure medications which we discussed so why continuous eeg monitoring is required in such patient is that uh, to confirm that seizures have been treated adequately or uh, if it is uh, still activity persisting to guide us on further anti seizure medications and to assess the level of suppression because uh, because we are giving sedatives patient should not be thrown to other end uh, also uh, after withdrawal if the patient is developing relapse or what is the patient's status when the infusions are tapered it also be uh, obtained so what, what will you do if uh, continuous eeg is not available because technically continuous eeg is the best one but most of the time continuous eeg may not be available so is there any alternative to continuous eeg prolonged eeg uh, thrice daily prolong okay. prolonged the eeg thrice daily okay continue one hour eeg three times a day that can be an alternative okay. Oh. The choice of infusion agent, uh, midazolam is a preferred agent. It's a benzodiazepine, as we all know, it binds to the benzodiazepine receptor and causes allosteric modulation of GABA A and increases the affinity of GABA. It is water soluble, rapidly acting. We know the doses. If uh, uh, midazolam infusion is unsuccessful uh, after uh, one hour, we can uh, go with the propofol or pentobarbital. Another uh, side effects of uh, using metasolum is the patient can have prolonged sedation. There can be tachyphylaxis. On withdrawing, the patients can have again seizures, again recurrent status epilepticus. Hypotension can be caused, but it's less common. Propofol, uh, it is a phenol derivative. GABA A agonic is highly lipophilic. Uh, doses we have discussed. Again, uh, after uh, one hour, if it is unsuccessful with uh, propofol, we have to go with other agents like high dose uh, barbitrate. Uh, there is something called propofol infusion syndrome, which consists of uh, rhabdomyolysis, severe metabolic acidosis, and cardiac and renal failure. Again, propofol is associated with hypotension. It is dose dependent, respiratory depression, withdrawal seizures, and recognized status epilepticus follows. Pentobarbital, it's a barbitrate. It binds to the barbitrate receptor site and potentiates a GABA action the GABA A receptor. Again, barbitrate can cause barbitrate coma, hypotension, prolonged sedation, pneumonia, hepatotoxicity, and uh, ileus and immune dysfunction. So, most of the anti medications are uh, metabolized by liver and excreted by kidney. So, dose adjustments and uh, half life of such drugs should be noted. Uh, ketamine, it is an NMDA receptor uh, antagonist. It blocks the excitatory glutamate and it is used particularly helpful in the later phases of status epilepticus when we have uh, exhausted all the GABA agonists or promoters. And uh, if you think the excessive glutaminergic activity is precipitating the seizure. So, though the optimal dosing is not yet been identified, initial dose we can give a, a 2 mg per kg, followed by an infusion of 1.5 to 10 mg per kg per hour. Uh, it is, uh, there is no hypotension risk. Uh, moving on to anti seizure medications, we have discussed uh, the mechanism of action of uh, leptocytum earlier. For non convulsive status epilepticus and uh, refractory status epilepticus and uh, new onset refractory status epilepticus, uh, uh, initial loading dose of up to 60 mg per kg IV can be given, maximum uh, 4500 mg, just over 5 to 15 minutes. Again, dose adjustment is needed in the uh, in permanent cases. Any time, which is an hidden time, uh, we have discussed the mechanism of action. In, in uh, cases like uh, status epilepticus, non penal status epilepticus, initial loading dose of uh, 20 mg per kg can be given. Again, risk of hypotension, cardiac arrhythmias uh, are that due to the propylene glycol, which is used to solubilize the phenytoin. And rarely local pain and injury can occur. Again, uh, it's an enzyme inducer. 
renal and hepatic insufficiency uh, dose adjustment and monitoring should be done phosphenitoin it is the pro drug of phenytoin it is hydrolyzed to phenytoin by serum phosphatases it is water soluble it is less toxic than phenytoin valproate it is a aliphatic carboxylic acid uh, initial loading dose up to 40 mg per kg can be infused uh, again hepatotoxicity hyperammonic encephalopathy coagulopathy and rare acute pancreatitis can occur again dose adjustment is required in hepatic pain impairment so up to what time we are going to continue this continuous infusions is that we require 24 hours of clinical and electrographic seizure suppression and once we attain that after that uh, we gradually taper over 12 to 24 hours again some highly sedating agents like pentobarbital which has got a very long half life does not necessarily need to be tapered as usual dose adjustment should be done according to the pharmacokinetics lamotrigine um, lactosamide these are all new agents uh, we just got uh, just been suggested as uh, adjunctive therapies Uh, one some important side effect is that it can cause PR prolongation and second degree and complete uh, AV block. Topiramide, it has got multiple mechanism actions. You have to remember uh, lactosamide because it's a very important drug in the recent days. Oral lactosamide is used in most of the refractory epilepsies, most of the syndromic yes, epilepsies because it is said that lactosamide is a pathology changing effect. If you give it for medial temporal sclerosis, it changes the sclerosis. Uh, like that they are telling so lacosamide is a new drug also as you mentioned in the protocol for status epilepticus if patient is having continuous absence seizures or like the continuous myotonic seizures despite uh, giving phenytoin or levitation loading dose we can consider lacosamide IV as much okay so yes, try to read so each dose also hmm. yeah. yes, injections are seven okay continue and so Topiramate, again, it has got uh, metabolic side effects, sedative effects, and cognitive dysfunction. Uh, some other drugs which can be used as an add on drugs are Clobazam, which is a long acting benzodiazepine, can be given orally or through nasogastric tube, initiated at a dose of 5 mg per day and titrated up to maximum 40 mg per day. In drowsiness, lethargy, drooling, aggressive behavior, irritability, sedation, uh, prescriptive infection can occur. Brivaroxetum, uh, it is a synaptic vesicle protein 2A inhibitor. It can be given to dose of 50 to 200 mg per day, oral or IV, AAV. <laughs> drowsiness, uh, dizziness, and psychiatric disturbance and sedation can occur. Paramphenol. Yeah, continue, continue. Paramphenol, it is an AMPA receptor antagonist. Uh, it is available as a war drug. Uh, recommended dose of uh, 2 mg per day and uh, maximum maintenance dose of 12 mg per day. Uh, this drug was associated with the clinical improvement and resolution of seizures on EEG within 72 hours of starting treatment in many cases. Again, uh, those adjustments should be made. Can I be dial? Uh, before that, uh, the endocannabinoid system, uh, it regulates the many physiological responses of the body, including pain, memory, appetite, and mood. More specifically, cannabinoid receptor 1, uh, they are found within the pain pathways of the brain and spinal cord, uh, which may affect the cannabinoid induced analgesia and the anxiolysis properties. Cannabinoid 2 receptors have been found to have effects on immune cells where they may have uh, uh, cannabinoid induced anti inflammatory process. So, uh, cannabinoid uh, has been suggested as an adjunctive treatment for uh, management of seizures with uh, syndromes like Lennox, uh, Gestalt syndrome, and Travet syndrome. And other, uh, other uh, therapeutic uses are there like uh, neuropathic pain, 
uh, and cancers. And those adjustments should be made. Coming to immunomodulated therapy, since uh, many cases of NARSA appear to have an immune, autoimmune or inflammatory etiology, uh, immunomodulated therapy can be tried. Uh, this should be considered within the first uh, 42 uh, 24 to 72 hours from the onset of uh, status of lupus. First line therapies are methylprednisolone, IVIG, or even plasma therapies can be tried. Methylprednisolone at a dose of 20 to 30 mg per kg, maximum 1 grams per day can be given for 3 to 5 days. IVIG 2 grams per kg can be given over 2 to 5 days, or plasma therapies can also be tried. If the response of nausea or fires to initial immunotherapy is incomplete, again, uh, ketogenic dietary therapy can be adjust, uh, proposed. Um, if it is still refractory, second line immunosuppressive therapy like uh, rituximab, poplizumab, or anakintra can also be started. In most cases, uh, if it is refractory, we go with uh, rituximab which is a monoclonal antibody directed against the CD20 antigens on the surface of the B lymphocytes. Uh, before giving rituximab, we have to pre-medicate um, approximately 30 minutes uh, with uh, astomnophen and anti histamine and methylprednisolone. Initial infusion is at a rate of 50 mg per hour. Uh, if there is no re infusion related reaction, we can gradually increase at uh, 50 mg per hour every 30 minutes to a maximum of uh, 400 uh, mg per day. In the subsequent infusion, we can directly start with 100 mg per hour infusion. And again, it can be increased at the rate of 100 mg per hour every 30 minutes to a maximum of 400 mg uh, per hour. And we have certain uh, non-pharmacological uh, interventions like various nerve stimulations and uh, surgical approaches, transcranial magnetic stimulation and electroconversive therapy for uh, with uh, I like to conclude, sir. There are other topics which uh, need discussion, like uh, reflex epilepsy and break uh, two seizures. Time is over, only 30 seconds are remaining. <laughs> okay. okay. So, anyway, it was a good session. Yeah, I discussed everything in detail.